Hello and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. I'm Twisted Logic. In this episode, right now, we uh, I'm just picking up from where I just recorded. We're melting some warhammers. We're making warhammers. They're not good enough. They're going into the melt stockpile where they're going to be melted down and, and remade. So the metalsmiths are constantly going to be making these silver warhammers and um, gaining skill until we have uh, some that are good enough. Now I need an area for my squads to train. I need at least, I'm gonna need at least one squad, but maybe maybe we'll do two squads here. And I wanna start getting them training because I have a lot of guys um, that are starting to idle now. There's a lot of work going on in the fortress right now. I have some, they're making the bedrooms here once uh, once most of these beds are in then I'll start designating these as rooms I haven't done that yet you click on it on the bed here or to make it a room and then enter and then no other options need to be set here somebody will auto pick up that room let's see so this is all dug out here as well I'm gonna actually dig a channel again. Well, I'll smooth. I'll smooth some of the walls actually to make it look a little nice in here first. So I'll smooth some just the walls. Each, and I'll dig out the center. And then after the walls are completed, uh, being smooth stoned because there is a lot of work going on right now, then I'll come in and, and dig out. I'll channel out this area as well. I don't know how crazy we're getting. We're not going to get too crazy with this room. Uh, but this room is going to grow trees for us. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to give enough, the we're going to dig out the room so it's large enough for the trees to grow. So it's we're going to need to channel down a few Z layers through it. I believe the minimum is 2, but but we're going to I think we're going to do 4 in this fortress. So 4 Z, 4 Z layers of open space and then we're going to flood the floor so it's all mud. And then once you open up the caverns, that's when the spores are released from the caverns that start growing things in random places. If you're digging, I don't know if I have an example of it. Yeah, stuff's starting to grow down here. Uh, tunnel tube right here. That tunnel tube, the... I can actually set a zone here, which I think I'll do now, um, and set this as a pen or pasture. And now I can have the animals graze in here. I'll pop up and graze. And if the forces of darkness, because this is kind of outside the fortress still, forces of darkness come or uh, we get undead, they'll probably go kill those things. I'm fine with that. Is this bridge complete? No, build G. So I'm going to build a bridge here. Oh, you know what? I, I really keep forgetting that I have a retract bridge right here. Really, really keep forgetting that there's a bridge here that, so, so this area is protected down here. Yeah, that's how I did it. I did it like that, so that way this area here would still be protected. So yeah, so they'll be fine then. So he's going to start grazing. He's going to eat these um, little mushrooms and plants that grow down here. And we'll be 100% protected. Same with them. And maybe we can even start shearing them to get some wool. So we'll go to the farmer's workshop here. Spin thread process, we're gonna add a new task. This is gonna be shear animal. And repeat that. Body part of any yarn. And we're gonna set this really high so they keep doing it. So uh, maybe 7,000 to 9,000. I don't think that we'll ever hit that number. I'm going to add the same thing here. Shear animal. Repeat. 
They're also going to spin that into thread. Y. I'm going to press Y here for weave cloth for yarn. Repeat that. The range of this I'm going to set uh, 300 to 450. And those are just numbers off the top of my head. There's no special thing to do there. They may hit 300 and 450. That's possible. That's very possible. I don't want all of my thread turned into cloth. I need You need some thread for the hospital. And you do need cloth for strange moods. Now the kitchen's here. We're rendering fat so we can... Maybe make soap at some point. Brew drink. Brew drink. Okay. In the previous episode, we layered this space here. This is actually, I think, three guild halls in one. I guess I'll give him a door then. And I didn't start making statues yet, but maybe I can add some statues in there. I can build some tables in there. Planning mode on. Eight tables is fine. And then some chairs. Stockpile of uh, finished goods. Here, we'll put that right there. Settings of this. We'll just forbid everything. Except for... Um, Permit that. Goblets. And then another stockpile of food. I'll put that there. Settings of this will be uh, forbid everything. Now enable. B for block all. And then just plant. Just uh, drinks here. Permit. Oh, and then also, settings, I, I almost missed it, and food here, um, U for prepared food. I, I guess I could set up a take command as well, so take from a pile of workshop, and then we'll, uh, let's go right there. Let's see. Petition. This guy wants to eradicate monsters. I'll approve this one. Now, if I go to uh, L for locations, only guild members there. I'm going to change these to be. Um, citizens only, so that way if they're not in the guild they can still go hang out in there if they want to. The Engraver Guild. Agreed to build a guild hall, but none of them, all, none of the other ones say that. So maybe I missed the engraver uh, guild hall. So I'm gonna just make a new one. So I for zones. I'm gonna build it right on top of this uh, multi guild. Right there. M for meeting area. Location. Add location. G for guild. And then the engraver hall. Now I'm going to go back to locations with lowercase l. Agreed to build a guild hall. The Amethyst Guild. That's fine. That all looks great. 
So maybe in a later, um, so now we know that we can stack guild halls. In a later fortress, maybe I'll, um, I'll build maybe a pretty, pretty large looking, uh, maybe a pretty large guild hall. Uh, can't be that big. Somewhere around, what size is this? This is 26 by 18. Yeah, maybe like 25 by 20. Something like that. And I'll decorate this room, make it awesome, and then I'll just stack every professions guild into the one hall. That would be pretty funny, huh? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a little, uh, little bit of an exploit, but... You've always been able to stack zones. It's not new. See, everybody's doing a lot, a lot of work right now. See how these bedrooms are coming along. So this this chunk over here is done. So I'll just set these. R make bedroom enter. Just move over with the keyboard and then R enter. If the doors weren't on the rooms, then I may have to like resize with plus and minus, but now the door is done. Okay, so we do these two as well. I'll enter. Okay. I. Location. So meeting area, assign location. Add location, we'll set this as a um, temple. Okay, th this is the um, worshippers list here. When I go, I can set it to no specific deity and anybody can come in and kind of pray for generic things. And If I scroll up and down this list here, it's going to tell me how many worshippers that deity has and also what, what the heck it, it represents. A lot of these, why are these all sky, wind, and hunting? Okay. All these weird, like, this wasn't that... This wasn't that big of a list here. But once I accepted that, um... I think it's a human, I think it was a human. Um, uh, this human bowman. I think he's the one that I accepted uh, uh, to eradicate monsters, so he brought in a bunch of his crazy religions. That's why it's only one worshiper on all those. This one we're going to set to... Um, that'll be a mountain shrine. there's so much work going on right now that I'm just gonna let them do their thing and uh, they're starting to eat males in the hall they're starting to bring bring things into the hall let me check the yeah so 810 that the, this room right here um, this is the engraver guild the value of 810 this one is also in the same the minor guild here is the same location, or over the same tiles anyway, it's layered. Also 810, also 810, value of 810 on this one as well, this is the uh, engraver guild. Are there two engraver guilds? Yeah, I made two engraver guilds, that's fine. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to let them continue working. Looks like a lot of the, all the water's dried up, except here and there. Oh, what happened? Something happened. Oh, so I'm going to press lowercase a, and that's to view the announcements. Well, it's a human caravan has arrived and a guild representative. Great. So I'll unpause it. So we got a human caravan and a guild representative. The guild representative is at this guy. Yeah, so we're gonna follow him. He's gonna actually go to one of the dwarves 
and we're going to do kind of like a negotiation of what we need in the fortress. We're going to be like, hey, we need more leather. Hey, we need more uh, wool or cut gems. He's going to seek out, I think, the mayor, one of the nobles. So if I press N for noble, he should be looking for um, Limmel here. And it looks like Oh, okay, he was looking for the broker. Yeah, that's right. If diplomats diplomats leave unhappy, he's like taking him on a goose chase to his office there. If diplomats leave unhappy, maybe you don't have a broker, you gotta check on your broker if uh, you get the message where diplomats left unhappy. Okay, so the builder Udil here meets with the human guild representative. I guess his name is N. Ulrich. Okay. Oh, oh, his name is shortened there. Ulrakel. N. Ulrakel. On behalf of the Merchants Guild, let me extend greetings to your people. There's much to discuss. Enter. There's much to share. Information and civilization world info updated. In earlier versions, it would tell you what the heck changed. It would tell you something about the army that maybe attacked one of the sites, like goblin armies moving around. I preferred that. I didn't like this um, new way to do it. So I now I have to go into the civilizations menu. However, it's fine. A to finish peeking and on conversation. What request do you have for a merchant? So A to begin the discussion. And now I can go up and down this list here with the arrow keys on the keyboard and over on this side with the up and down the um, plus and minus. I want a little bit of, um, let's see here. I'm just coming up from the bottom. Would like some yarn. So I go up and down this list and then press left and right. That's going to change the priority. The higher the priority, the more expensive it's going to be. If there's no priority, maybe they won't bring it. There's standard things that they always bring. So they're going to bring some of the things, but if, say we need a lot of glass, then just go up and down the list here. And now they're going to bring us a bunch of glass. Lie. And we'll take some charcoal as well. Oops. And we'll take some charcoal as well. Not very important. And then even if they bring this stuff, uh, you don't necessarily have to buy it from them. The world glass. And then also if you're planning on attacking them next time they come back, you just tell them to bring everything. We can get elephants from them. Yeah, we're gonna get some elephants. We want, we're high priority on the elephants. Hell yeah. Let's see if we can make uh, war elephants or something. That's the only thing that's really jumping out is at me that I want right now. And then they're also gonna give me, um, here they're gonna give me uh, what they want to buy from us. So windows, they're going to give us a decent price for crowns. I normally don't worry about this stuff, I, and I just sell them whatever I'm selling them. He's going he's to go check out the fortress and uh, request a trader here. They already brought the goods up with the auto trade. They're still bringing the animals in, so they're still getting ready. Smooth so on that. There's they're making a lot of progress here. Yeah, I think they're just get, they're kind of just inundated with work right now. Um, still. 
Oh, they're ready to trade now, so I'm going to press T to trade. Shift enter over here. 1650. I got glass is pretty cheap, and uh, they do need it for strange moods, so I usually pick up glass and clay. Uh, I can buy some wood too. That's all super cheap. I do want to do a search, so Q, and then pick. This copper pick's pretty cheap. And you know what, I'll probably start making making my own copper picks soon. Um, so Q and then backspace. And then Q, and I'm gonna type in bin. So I have some cloth bins here, a leather bin. Let's go for the cheap ones here. Oh, that's it. I don't want all that, I want some cloth. So they could, they'll, they'll trade this. Trader, trader profit is uh, higher than the value, so they'll, they'll definitely trade it. I want to see what else I can get here in these bins. There's leather. I wanted to see if I can get maybe some silk. Let's find more leather. Let's see if they'll trade this. Oh yeah. So that profit was uh, like 600 and the value was over a thousand. They still traded, which is great. I gotta dig an area for the um, squads. I normally do 11 by 11s for squads. And that'll be the barracks. They'll train in there, they'll sleep in there. Let's see what else. 10 by 10. Yeah, let's build the second one over here. So yeah, I normally do the 11, 11 by 11 for squads, but uh, you can know, do them all shapes and sizes. Is that guy in a strange mood right there? Oh yeah. What's his name? Saravesh? i follow Saravesh here. Oh, it looks like he picked up some leather. He may have been in a strange mood, and I just didn't notice from earlier. But he is picking up a lot of leather right now, which is uh, pretty good. He's got a stone block as well. Some cloth. Some more cloth. Is he gonna get some gems or something? Oh, he's gonna get metal bars, so he's gonna get silver too. Yeah, well, he's doing stuff. We'll see what he makes in a little bit. Yeah, so you know what? This is, uh, they're taking a little too long to, uh, So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get rid of this smithstone there. I could have done that, but there's a channel down here. I know we'll also to the inside here. Let's give those miners some more work. So we've got more bedrooms. What's this petition? This guy wants to uh, eradicate some monsters. You guck! Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll approve him. What I'll do is, um... I'll dig an area over. Why are these guys all hanging up by this tree? What the heck is going on here? Oh, gathering plants. Okay. They're, they're just like... Uh, it says zero idlers, but they're just all standing there and underneath this tree right here. Like, they're all just skating off work. What I'm gonna do is, uh... Dig a room, dig a whole way into this cave here, because I want to get a squad, a ragtag squad, and send them into this cavern. See what's down here. As I go down in the layers here, it kind of gets cut off right there, but it keeps going. There was a, um, yeah, there's a figurine here of a donkey. Oh, donkey. Donkey hoof? Let me go check it. What was it? I think it was a donkey hoof figurine of a human, yeah. Donkey hoof figurine of a human. So something's in this. Something's in there. I'm not going to dig right in like that. I'm going to almost dig in. And I'm going to build a, um, build a bridge in there. So in case something nasty is in there, I could cl close it off. Where can I put the lever for it? Just, uh, maybe like this. Put the lever right in there. Oh, what happened to my cat? Assign an animal. I should make that a dog in case it was something that came in and stole the cat without me noticing. Because the creatures can exist on your map. You can press U. I have troglodytes and um, crundles here, some falcons. They can. There can also be stealth units. So I could have actually a. a there could be a bunch of goblins stealthed somewhere on the map here, maybe over here, and I'm not even going to know that they're there unless one of my dwarves sees them. Then they'll appear in the units list and visible on the map. He made a um, cool backpack. Shift L for artifacts. Let's take a look at this. Uh... Oh, it's an Impala, Impala leather backpack here. Um, so we can V for description. Uh, it's an Impala leather backpack. It's got the highest quality of craft dwarfmanship. It's decorated with uh, cave spider silk and horsebone. It's adorned with hanging rings of native silver and menaces with spikes of Impala leather slate, llama wool. Olive wood, and um, there's an image of two forgotten beasts in giant kestrel leather. Sounds fine. Sounds grand. An item of. On the item is an image of cabochons in silver. Okay. That's a, that sounds like a amazing backpack. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of it. <laughs> Um, so we can get rid of the trader request here at the depot so he can get back to work. Okay, two grain wheat, no seeds. So maybe... I do want to grow some beer, so maybe we'll try single grain wheat. I'll make a stockpile of food right here. Uh, settings of this is going to be seeds only. So B to block all, P to permit, and I'll go into that. Uh, plump, helm, plump helmet spawn here, I'll, I'll disable that. 
and pigtail. Cave wheat, sweet pods, and rock nuts I'm also gonna disable because those are kind of um, cave seeds. Those are all cave plants that, that would probably be for in here. Settings of this one. Get rid of some of this wheat right here. Not all of it though. And I'll build a door right there. Oh, what's there? P, X. And then I'll build the door there. Okay. Plant seeds, great. So I want to also build a um, another still here. Yeah, that's a good place. Not really sure if I'm going to expand the farm here or not yet, so I don't want to build the still like right right on the farm. But this is a fine place for it. And this will make a start making our beers, so food. There. Settings. No block all. Oh, rice beer. Okay, so you make beer out of the rice. So what I'm gonna do is Z for um, status and go over to the stocks here, and then E for enhanced view, and then just gonna type in pick and see how many picks I have. So I got five picks. So over here in the um, Metal Crafters Forge, I'm gonna add a new task weapons, um, silver. I can't make the picks out of silver. I'm going to have to add a new task here and, and smelt the tetrahedrite. Magnetite ores. Okay, so uh, magnetite, we're in the Door Fortress wiki again here. Magnetite ore is an ore of iron, which is um, great. It also sometimes contains, um, magnetite cluster may sometimes contain veins of native platinum. What is this? Native silver, native silver. So I don't know how much of that we actually have. I also want to make a um, larger barn block stockpile over here. And this will be metals, but I'm going to forget forbid uh, silver. And I'll just turn off the bins for now. This one here. This is going to be only silver. Now sometimes when you make when you make an object in the middle smith's forge and then you melt that object and make it again and melt it and make it again and melt it sometimes you can actually gain metal from that it's a kind of an exploit it's not um I wouldn't consider that cheating normally um if if you're trying to get skill up like that uh, but maybe some of the other people do, but you know, it's, you know, it's how you want to play the game. Yeah, I, th I believe you could do it with arrows. You can look up on the Dwarf Fortress wiki how, and then uh, I'll probably be doing another video on more in depth of the metal industry later on. And, and I'll go over some of the, 
some of the exploits that you can do in that regard. Now I'm going to set this because I want, uh, this is for the tetrahedrite mel melting, I want copper. Uh, a decent amount of it because with the copper I can actually start making uh, picks and pieces of armor um, 75 to 100 I, I still want to keep these kind of low because they're going to um, they're using up the wood as they do it and I don't have a reliable wood yet There's too many people picking leaves here. Get all those trees. And you know what I'll do is uh, I'll add silver axes, battle axes, repeat that. Range of this is going to be um, 25 to uh, 30. No, you know what, that's on hand, so as they pick them up, they're going to... So that that's going to be stockpile range, so I'll do two to three. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into um, Dwarf Therapist and I'll turn all the stewards on to wood cutting. And that's going to allow them, they're just going to carry axes around with them, all the stewards. And it'll allow them to... Um, chop the trees and then collect them as well that's not done yet okay so we got more migrants which is great uh, I'm starting to get more dwarves than work right now they're um and which is which is a good thing because now I have the um now I'm starting to get the uh barracks set up so in the barracks I'm gonna build um beds Planning mode on and uh, 10 beds in each room. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 10 in there. 10 in there, and then also armor stands. Build some doors in. And then lastly, uh, weapon racks. Okay, that's uh, pretty much all set. That just has to be hauled, and we'll smooth stone that. And once complete, once they start, uh, they only really need to bring one of those items in there, then I can set that as a barracks, and uh, I can set two squads. I'm gonna um, process the migrants in Dwarf Therapist off camera. I'm just gonna make them Builders and stewards. Oh, great. So they're getting, they're starting to get this done. Some giant mountain goats. They build a trap. Uh, cage trap, so lowercase c. So maybe put one right there. This is going to require mechanisms and cages. I have this artifact cage here, and I really don't want it to get stolen. But with the animal stockpiles, if I go into the settings of this and animals here. I can just specify empty cages, I can't put any quality on them, or if they're metal or wood. Which always kind of bothered me that I couldn't specify if it was metal cages in this section and wood cages in another. I would make these um, stockpiles to melt things. 
uh, melt cages, and then they would, I'd end up with a bunch of wooden cages that I'd eventually have to dump, and it was kind of a pain to come back to it every once in a while. I have some copper now, and I'm going to be making some uh, copper picks. Repeat this. Range is going to be, I'm going to set the range low, 2 to 3, or 2 to 4 I'll do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up all of the stewards to be woodcutters. They're all going to be carrying axes. All of the builders are going to be set to mining. And, and then I'm going to take the original miners that I have now. I'm going to set them as builders. This way... I mean, you could do it in different ways. Uh... The miners are probably the three, the happiest guys here because they they have the highest skill in one job. And however, um, if they sometimes they want um, to create things, make different things. This the, each of the dwarves has their own unique uh, hopes and dreams. If I click on one of the dwarves here, and I believe I could press Z for status and then enter for thoughts and preferences. Um, I feel so good. That's the that's the kind of the quote of the top here. So this um, Tullin here, Tullin Fish Spear, it's got a nickname here, Tullin Fish Spear, euphoric due to inebriation. I think I'm gonna grab my beer myself uh, shortly. She feels lonely after being away from people for too long. If you jump past all this, you kind of get into her physical description. Things that she likes here. Great sense of empathy. Like others in her culture, she holds crafts dwarfsmanship to be one of the highest ideals and celebrates talented artisans and their masterworks. If I keep reading in here, oh yeah, here we go. She dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. So if one of the miners has this dream of creating a masterwork and you leave them to be a miner for their the entire fortress, they're never gonna achieve that dream. They're not going to get happy thoughts from that. They're gonna actually become saddened over time and maybe even haggard. Um, from not creating a masterwork and that's that's the reason why after a certain amount of time I can start making my own picks um, then I'll switch those miners off of mining and, and they could still do it but I'll set the rest of the builders to be miners but everybody has their own play style somebody Maybe doesn't do like kind of blocks of professions like I do. That's fine. All right. It's how you want to play. This is just a maybe if you've only been watching somebody who sets each dwarf individually. Um, when you watch me, you have a different play style. This uh, still right here, I'll add a task to for a drink from plant. And I'll repeat that. Oh, now that this disaster is over, I'm going to clean this up a little bit with the um, digging. I can actually change the priority to kind of something normal. But I have some coffee next to me, so I'm not going to breach it again. Alright. I'm going to double check everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is going to be priority one to channel, because I want to get this... Um, back to being even and then the next one down uh, I could wait for that 
Tetrahedron. Okay. Good, decent amount of stone right there. So I have to build some kind of trap. I don't necessarily have to, but I, I should build some kind of trap for the um, the inv the invasion that I know is going to happen. What is that? King snakes coming around now. So you got to be a little bit careful. Build a lever right here. And this is going to be for that uh, for that cave. But I do want to start planning out this trap that I'm going to make. So maybe what I'll do is um, dig a ramp or a channel. I'll dig a channel. Uh, maybe like to five wide right there. And then Make sure you don't breach it. Yeah, you know what? I can I can dig this deeper like that. So they're gonna come down. They'll come down this. They'll be walking in here. Um, would rather have a reservoir here than just kind of like coming off of the stream because that'll take forever to fill up. The reason that I'm putting uh, three spaces here is for building destroyers. So I'm going to put a floodgate. No, no, no. I'm going to put a fortification, then a floodgate, then another fortification. This way, if um, a building destroyer were to come in, they wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to hit that floodgate unless they were swimming. So if a swimming building destroyer comes in here, and this fortification is um, completely submerged with a seven depth of water, then they would be able to swim right over top of the fortification and break the floodgate. Uh, that's not very likely, though. I think it's a risk we're willing to take. And then. So we'll have to build a bridge over here across this, and maybe a bridge here. And then this is also going to need drainage as well, so... Now I could, I guess I could make these bridges. Instead of, instead of the fortification, floodgate fortification, I could do bridges here. And then when I open that up, it just kind of comes in. Let me actually, you know what I'll do is I'll nothing underneath this so I'm gonna do a channel and I won't I won't breach that yet because once I breach it then it's a vulnerability so I'll wait for the trap to be completed and I'll take this out as a um, reservoir as well I guess I probably should have dug that out uh, so there it's like the bridge here because I think if I put the bridge down here I don't know if it'll close over top of this but we can try that out <clears throat> yeah so let me let me build a floor on top of this And they're gonna dig themselves out over here. The 
that's not going to breach, and that'll be okay as well. So I could put the bridge there. Switch to a uh, switch to a regular. Okay, make all these rooms. So that one. R, enter. Okay, so build, construct, floor. Just make this out of wood or something. Building our drowning trap, I add. I'm trying to do the floor of this, and I fixed up the um, unsuspend that. Finish up this layer, and we've got our barracks done down here. Now I just got a. a if I go to N here, my mayor here, my mayor's requirements are not going to be met. Um, he also has a mandate to make chains, which I can make the chain, but I'm going to have to dig a um, office and a quarters and a dining room for the mayor. I'll make two squads in the next episode and dig out the mayor's quarters. And we're already starting to make some beers down here. Just had some graves next. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more videos.